Welcome everyone to this edition of Water Horse. My name is Jerry Williams, and I got my good old guest host here, Mr. <laughs> Jerry Harris. It's my turn, right? It's your turn. <laughs> we got a lot of information anyway, but we'll get started with that once we take a short pause for our sponsors. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion Stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another World Grand Champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry, you done a good job like Thank you've done you. it before. I, I, I sent them to the commercial. Yes. Okay, right. Announcements. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. Four days of the trainer show, and I am looking forward to it. We got Chris Zand, Dean Baird, and Brent Grider marking the cards. So each night's going to start at 6 p.m. Now, every, what's on everybody's mind right now, Jerry, is the fact that... Uh, we have filed a lawsuit. Yes. And I want everybody to understand because this question has come up. This lawsuit is filed on behalf of Michael and Casey Wright. They're they're who the uh, they were facing multiple charges. Some of them HPA, some of them not. But this suit helps every trainer, not just Michael and Casey and Josh. I didn't have a picture of Josh. I tried to find one. But this right here, that was taken when we went down to their barn. Everybody needs to realize that this is for everybody. Yes. It's not, it's not just for the Wright brothers. It's for everybody because they use the same tactics to get violations on them as they use on everybody else. So that's, that's one of the things. The other thing is, is I got a call, and they said, well, this is just going to help the Wrights. No, it's not. Frank Eichler has done his homework. He has, he has laid this game plan out. He's done it in a way that it protects this industry. And he has, he has shown so much that we're going to go over different things here in just a second that Frank has done that really helps us. And if we win this lawsuit for the Wright brothers, it's going to help every trainer. Yes. It'll help every owner. It'll help us all. It'll help the industry. 
And we know in the past that the USDA has hired different individuals to come in here. They hired Cecil Moses, a retired FBI agent, to investigate the industry. They wanted to get something on it. Well, when he told them that the problem wasn't with us, it was with the BMOs and what they were doing, they fired him. We had him on the show to where he talked about that. Another thing is individuals have come in here, different BMOs or different uh, equine veterinarians have come in here and inspected horses after the USDA inspected them and they couldn't find anything wrong. One of them is Dr. Strongberg. Now, he's a well-known veterinarian. He's a super good guy. We did an interview with him during the celebration when he was here. But he even said that they was interpreting the scar wrong. And this was the USDA's person. Yes. But what really gets me is they, they've done everything in the world to prove that we're in the wrong, and it seems to keep backfiring. They, they came out with going to have a, a referral basis to where you could ask a second opinion from a BMO. 52% of the time, they couldn't even agree. I mean, they could not agree on the violation that they were writing up on somebody. But this, this uh, lawsuit has to do with due process. And I believe it was back in 2008, I believe that's when it was, that, or eight years ago, it was eight years ago uh, that they said that it, the court said that it was illegal what they were doing as far as applying the, the different uh, inspections and how they, the horses they was calling out and they weren't given uh, due process but they're still doing the same thing as they was doing back then. They haven't changed at all. They're still coming up with the same thing over and over and over again. So I'm thankful that the Wright brothers agreed to be the one that stood up and, and filed the suit. I really am, but my hat really goes off to Frank for putting all of it together and doing the research because he has found more things wrong with what they did or what they are doing than you would ever ever relate it has to some of them don't even have to do with an hpa the horse protection act says to inspect a horse before it's exhibited or shown or something yes sold it never said nothing about doing checking behind the, the hind feet or checking them when they come out that's post-show. Yes. That's after they've been shown. They're not getting ready to go show. But they have continuously created different avenues to right violations. And it, it's got to the point now that really and truly the industry had no choice but to... Oh, you're right. Fight. You know, the, the biggest thing of it is you don't never know. They change so many rules all the time, so you don't know what you're supposed to do. That's it. Because every time you come up, it's, it's something different. And you can look at this past celebration. Every night, it was something different that they came up with or they changed well, every night. They'll give you one thing, and they take it back the next night. And, you know. Well, they, they don't know their self. But only, only, the, the basic problem is this lawsuit does not have anything to do with a proposed rule that's coming out. This has to do with dealing with what they have already done. This new proposed rule, we're against it too, and I'm going I'm to read just some basic problems with a pr new proposed rule. I'm not going into it with depth, but first, the data reproduced in the tables in a proposed rule does not match up with the public, public available activity reports provided by the USDA's website. Frank Eichler found numerous places where they had falsified different numbers and, and documents to show that create a bad, in, bad view of us. Yes. Second, the data supposedly showing a higher rate of soaring detected by USDA inspections is invalid because it was not based on random samples of horses. In other words, they selected what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it 
and who they wanted to do. And that goes back to the fact that they always want the entry forms. They want to see who is entry. Then they go in there and they go through the entries to see who they're going to get. That's targeting. Yes. If I was the USDA, I would be afraid of who's going to testify and what they're going to say. I, if I, I don't care. I would not get on the witness stand and lie for anybody. So all of them BMOs, they can get in there. I do not believe they're going to say, yeah, everything I wrote, I truly believe was a sore horse. I would be worried even about the guards. Yes. About if they're willing to lie. And, and I'd just like to know how many times behind closed doors, they looked at the entry form and said, well, we'll we can go after this one. We can go after this one. Oh, hell, yeah, here comes this one. We can do this one. And Jerry, I'm just going to say, how many times have you gone up that the USDA is there today and inspected your horse? A bunch of times. I mean, that's what I'm you saying. You know, my biggest thing of it is you are there to keep a a horse that's not a um, that's a sore horse out of the ring, and you should be able to check all horses. You should not go to the injury form and find out what horse is showing. You should, you are there to watch the horses as they come up, and not knowing who got a horse in it or whatever. Yep, I'd be questioning the fact that they don't inspect everybody. They only want to inspect they, certain so, people. That's right. And on different nights, if if they go to one HIO, the horse is good. They go to another HIO, the horse is out. That brings up a major question with me. Here's third. The data cited in the proposed rule reflects rates for all HPA non-compliance violations, not soaring violations. In other words, a high band, soaring. Yeah. That's false. That's not true. The, the USDA's data result, resulted from a subjective inspection process that has been shown to be incapable of reproducing repeatable results. That's where the 52%, when they was getting second opinion, they couldn't agree. Yes. So they quit doing it. It didn't prove their point. So I relate back to what they did when Cecil Moses came back and said, the problem's not with them, it's with you. Well, hey, they fired him. Yeah. So they couldn't make the, the, the second opinion work for him, so they quit doing it. Fifth, USDA critically based its decisions on the view that rates of soaring were higher for Tennessee walking horses than other breeds but it lacked any, any proof or inspection data from other breeds to prove that. Yeah. In other words, they don't inspect other breeds. They just say, well, they're not, nothing's wrong with them. They're, all of those breeds are okay. We're only after this breed right here. To me, that's bias. So I'm going to, I'm going to read you exactly the definition of bias. Biased as any trend or deviation from the truth in data collection, data analysis, interpretation, or publication, which can cause false conclusions. Bias can occur either intentionally or unintentionally. Intention to introduce bias into someone's research is immoral. And that's where I see or what I see going on with the USDA is they want to believe this, they're told to believe this, so they jump on this kind of like we were told one time when I interviewed three veterinarians, they said, we're not seeing what we were told we would see. So people, that's where it is right now. The USDA will be at the shows this week, we know that or we expect them to be, but uh, just remember, they're under the gun now too. They are looking at exactly what they're doing, so they need to worry about which one of their people is gonna say, well, I knew I, would, I shouldn't, but I went ahead and turned that horse down, yeah. or what goes on behind closed doors. Now we got a surprise for everybody. We turn back the clock 10 years, and we're going to show you what the trainer show looked like 
10 years ago. Amateur, amateur specialty class. Does everybody know who that young lady is? Yep, she's been around for a while. Hey, this was, I'm telling you, it was a great night. This was an amateur, amateur special. Thank you, ladies. Second gear now. Show us your run and walk, please. I tell you what, this bomb, she, she was a, I mean, I love watching her show. Oh, yeah. I never seen, saw her show another horse for anybody other under Bobby Hugh. That's it. She's Bobby Hugh was her, was her, her go-to. Her go-to man. Her go-to man. And you know, Jerry, about these things, about these horses here. These horses last just as long as any other breed of horses out there. Well, Lord, yeah. You know, I, the other day I had Texas Joe Black at the barn. I think he's right at 20-something years old. And he still goes just like he when he was two or three. Yeah, well, he didn't like it because I was giving them other horses a cookie yeah. and didn't give him one. Yeah. He wanted one, too. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I really like looking back at this old video. It's just something, I mean, it, it's just something special. I do remember who won this, Taylor Walters and Miss Davis at the time. <laughs> walk, please. Flash football. Thank you, amateur lady riders. We'll ask you to steer over to the north side. There she is, Taylor All Walters. Right, Brian. She's ready Megan to Davis. Her way out of the east Jose is Dulce. Mike Davis will like this. He yep. gets to see that victory pass again. All three judges agreed. They're your amateur, amateur specialty champions here tonight. Megan Davis and Taylor Walters. Two good, two good riders that right is. there, buddy. Real, two the good, real good riders. Shelbyville, Tennessee. Thank you, ladies. You know, I like going back and looking at these videos. This is your adult amateur pony specialty class. You know, tonight is it's going to be very interesting uh, in the inspection area, watching what's going on. Yeah. But, Thank you, ladies. The I do know that, uh, calls for your remember that lady, now. don't Oh, yes. Show us your running walk, George please. Ann Pratt. You know, I talked to her one time. She said that, that she was going to get a cap in her train. She said, no, you ain't either. <laughs> I said, you, you're going in there because they're going to see that hair come through the gate. She was a great lady. I used to yes. have some fantastic conversations with her. She just, uh, she was genuine. Yes, she was. She really was. We've lost a lot of good people through the years. Walk, please. Flash football. But get back to Thank you, Amateur Lady Ryan. Our we'll ask you to reverse your loss of entries now. I, I still want everybody to realize this that to win this suit. It will help us enormously. Yes. Especially if they start to put the new proposed rules in, then we go after them too. So people need to realize this has nothing to do with proposed rulemaking. All right. This I'm has to do we'll with what they're currently doing. One more time now. And I think Frank Eichler the does a great year. job uh, strategic wise of pinpointing everything that's going to help us. Yes. It ain't nothing like going back watching these videos right yeah, here. It ain't. <laughs> it's not. I enjoy it so much. This is 10 years ago. Yes. And the, these people, they, some, some of these people still show, like yeah. the horse George Ann Pratt's on. It still yeah. shows mm -hmm. today. Walk, please. Flat football. 
All right. They were on all three there judges' cards. Miss George Ann Pratt and Samson. Samson. That's a great they horse. Right? Yeah, it is a good horse. As your amateur pony, 18-year and over champions. 2014 trainer show. Boy, that's a long time. But good times, too. Yes. Here's your 15 2, five year over open specialty Thank you, class. Kent. Close the gate, please. Five answer the call, Your Honors. That is your class. Class 16, 15 2 and over, Stallions, Mayors, and Gildings. Buyer to call the class. Hankins, your second judge. The Honorable Robbins, your third judge. Exhibitors, first way, flat walk, please. I'm trying to remember who won this class. Hard to remember back there. I should have run yeah. off of the results, but. That looks like Tim Smith. No, Tim Smith. Mm -hmm. John Allen, Justin Harris. Weaky. Second gear now. I had lunch with Weaky the other place. day. We talked about a lot of stuff going on yeah. in the industry. There's Herbert. Is that by the blue? I can't think of. I don't bleed so. I'm trying to think back. Boy, I'm the walker, ain't he? Yeah. We could try to tie this class, but if we was wrong, people make fun of it. <laughs> okay, well, there's some good ones in there. And your 52 Palm Beach Ritz. That's Mary what I Gildan thought. Champion on all three judges' cards. Terry Dodson family. Stroking over toward the south side. It's Palm Beach That's when Terry was Tennessee. really involved yes. with the industry. They exhibit to the top honors for Terry Dotson. I believe he bought that horse Winding from Creek uh, Stables, Kingston, Tennessee. Waterfall, did I think so. Terry Dotson really did a lot to help the industry, I can tell you that. Here's your amateur four-year-old stay in specialty. Lawsuit. I want to go back and get, make another statement about it because it is really about the t violating due process laws by disqualifying horses without giving Thank owners or right. trainers That's any opportunity to challenge their disqualification. Over, yes. And it was eight years ago, federal court determined that the USDA violated due process rights, but they have not stopped doing it. So to me, that's kind of like telling the courts, you don't care what they say, you're going to do what you want to. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's time that steps were made to make the USDA follow the law. But after all, this is America. Oh yeah, you're right. Was last time I checked anyway. 
I don't well, know about everybody else, the, but I don't care for my rights to be walked on. Well, the biggest thing is like we showed earlier of the two different measurements of the ruler yeah. on there. You know, how can you tell when they put you out for a shoeing violation on there, how can you tell your rule wasn't right? I know. Then they ruler. So, I mean, that could, that should be a thing that should be thrown out because the rulers, are, you can see the rules are measured two different ways. Well, another thing, you should have two or three rulers out there if you're going to do that. But a, a blacksmith, a farrier, they go, and, and I've watched Jeff, and I've watched, I've watched a bunch of them. I mean, Woody Woodruff, you name it, Tim Webb, all these guys, they work hard. Yes. And they want that horse shod right. They're not going to intentionally leave it an eighth or a quarter of an inch too long. Yes. They're going to do their best to make it right. And to me, that's, that's kind of like, I do not let my horse be shown unless I have a veterinarian check him prior to an equine vet. I want to know he's okay. Thank you, amateur riders. Go Everybody should please. do that. But a, the same with a farrier. A farrier makes his living shoeing these horses. Yes. He wants it right. He has a ruler. If someone else comes up and their ruler is a little different, that's not intentional. Yeah. We could sit here and, and talk about the right and the wrong, but he, here's where I am. I care about my horses. Yes. I don't want them abused. I have too much money invested in them to abuse them to where it, it could ruin them. Epic blue ribbon and blue Megan Sears. Davis. Both that horse won in this division and well. went on and one of the, one of the greatest show players yes. of all time and with Megan still in the south mm -hmm. to the unanimous championship honors for the Shamrock Farms Shelbyville Tennessee Boy that's a nice horse. That is a nice horse. He was nice with tail set. He just really came to his own when they took that tail set off. Yes. Well, he was a good one. Oh, he was a good horse, real good horse. You, you want me to take us to commercial? Yeah, we'll let you think you could. We'll be right back after this short pause for our sponsors. How's that? <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live foal guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you'll own one tomorrow. That's a fact. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do some more yeah, videos. We're, we're going to do something first because I want you to know Jerry sold a horse. Yeah, you know. You know. And, and, and uh, I was told it better be on here. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. James Wilson bought yakety yak, and I bet that Eli is going to be straddled yeah, up. Eli, Eli done a good job riding that horse. Well, what about his mother? Is he not going to get his mother a horse? Well, his mother said that she wouldn't really want to ride too much right now, but I think Eli is the one that's. Well, Eli's little brother's taking his yeah, horse. Yeah, he's taking his horse, me. yeah. James said he can't keep up with him. I can't wait to see them in the ring on that horse hey, right there. That, they'll do good. Yes. All right, now we're going to watch some more 2014 video. And I, I like watching these because I can sit here and watch them and think about who I think won yeah. without knowing because it's hard to remember back that far. But here's your lady's specialty class. Thank you, ladies. Second gear now. Go run it up, please. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Second gear. <laughs> It's a good class. It is a good class. I bet you a lot of the people wish we, we was to turn back the our years. I mean, I, might, my, I wouldn't mind being 10 years younger. Oh, yeah. That suit me to a T. This was a good class right here. I am going to tell everybody, though, Trainer show is going to start. Don't hesitate to have your horse videoed. And I wouldn't hesitate on having an equine vet come and check your horse before you ever take it. Because it, we're going to be in a, involved in a lawsuit that's going to take some time. Thank you, but Steer over to the we need to let them know that we mean business. We'll yep. Let's give these ladies a hand. Fine class. You know, Jerry, I do wonder, though, when it comes down time to Power Strokes right, Evening North Star North and North Megan North Davis. Francis G. Gentry, ladies champions, here tonight, Megan Davis and Power Strokes Evening Star. They carried the reserve. You know, I'd almost for forgot that they owned it. Yeah. Farm, Cincinnati and Shelbyville. Jay, what though? Megan can flat ride. I mean, no doubt about it. She can get it done. You know who that lady is? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> She's from Florida. It was another good class right here. As oh, it was. Real good class. Now. Go run in, walk, please. Oh, sister. Tell you what, Pam was a good rider. Uh -huh. She was, but she, I wish she was still in the industry, but she decided just to, said she was getting out. If I'm not mistaken, she's a vet. Small yes. animal uh -huh. vet. Small yep. animal vet. Yep, she's a vet. We're on the reverse in class 30. Real so nice lady. We'll take our break immediately Super lady. following this class. There's Miss Baum. Everybody knows who that one is. Yeah. Sister. All right, the Admission is a dollar and Pam Hendricks. The north side. It's Dr. Pam Hendrickson and admission is a dollar. She owns a reserve entry, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Thank you, Pam. It's a good horse. Yes.
Slap it wall. Thank you, amateur riders. Reverse your trail pleasure entries now. I'll bet and you five dollars. Slap walk, please. Oh. Cadillac wins this. Mm hmm. You don't bet? No, I don't think so. Well, I thought I'd try. We're on the reverse in class 38, class 39, three year old mares and geldings. You'll go next. And there are no entries in class 41. On the reverse in 38. And carrying the my black Cadillac. turn, making their way over to the south. Miss Allison Thorson and my black Cadillac. They are your amateur trail pleasure for year and under champions here tonight. Thank you, Allison. Allison Thorson. She's not a Thorson anymore. She's married. Yep. She does a lot of quarter horses. Yes, she has. Uh huh. Three year old mares and gildings. I hate to keep going back to this lawsuit, but I, I just want everybody to realize there's a phenom. Yeah. I want everybody to realize that the suit filed on behalf Thank of the Wright brothers will benefit everybody. Now. Yes. Not just please. the Wright brothers, but everybody. And the only reason I keep bringing that up is I had one person was upset about it, which, uh, had no right to. I told him, I said, if you'd have read the whole thing, you'd have known. But right now is the time for everybody to work together and, and support each other. That's right. We need time. to come together instead of be divided. But we waited a long time for for this to happen this way. Now it's not something that has been done in the past because we we have uh, fought the USDA before and won on two different occasions. Yeah, but nothing to up, this far. Nothing that, that's going to benefit us like this will. And the, the courts is, is really the only place it can actually be settled. Uh, Politically, we, we've tried it, and, and it don't work. Uh, every time a change of leadership comes in, it's different rules and regulations, and, and they get worse. Uh, the thing we're asking for is to follow the law. No, yeah. Do it the way it's supposed to be done. I was right, that is the phenom. Bruce and Robin McDonald owned him mm -hmm. then. to the north side. The three-year-old mayor and gilding unanimous champions here tonight, Justin Harris and Fina. They ride to the reserve unanimous honors for Bruce, well, Bruce and Robin McDonald are too good. Atlanta, Georgia. He just, he, he is the same. Yeah. He, he does not get, get overexcited. <laughs> he just cool-headed all the all way. way. Yep. Park Performance Open Specialty. You know, one of the things that really gets now, me about the please. way things have changed is the creativity of violations. Yes. That, that's what really bothers me more than anything is the way that the, the USDA has stretched the rubber band and, and, and 
more or less ignoring court ruling. Yeah. Uh, about due process and stuff like this. It's, it's like they feel like they're above the law. Uh, I know that they have fought us. Uh, even after we got the video law, they still tried to block us and keep us from videoing, which was against the law. Uh, and to create a way to get horses, especially when they come out. Yeah. That makes, that's never made any sense to me that for them to do that and then, and uh, uh, what was it, 2000? Well, it wasn't a few years ago that they started doing the back feet. Yeah. And it, just anything to find a violation that you could say is intentional. And there's no way it's intentional. You know, to me, I guess you you should call that a ring injury because if that horse didn't have, have that going in the ring, you know, I mean, you checked him going in. So how can he, you know? Well, I'm gonna tell you what gets me, Jerry, is if what they say, and they're saying it's the way we train them that causes the injury so it's intentional. If that is true, if that is true, then every time a horse breaks down in a thoroughbred race, they should be charged. Yeah. Because they're training that horse to run. They're training him to increase his speed. So if he breaks down, Thank you, exhibitors. Head on over to the south side. that's what they're training him to, yeah. training him to run. So, it, it, and that's it, what I'm saying, it makes no sense. And if it made sense, it'd be different. But it doesn't make sense. Just like when, when they say there's a scar, but nobody can see it. So it's uh, here's paroled in Tennessee and Jeff Locker, L.D. Jordan. He was a blacksmith. Yeah. Years. But it just, it, it just, there's got to be rhyme and reason on everything. And I think once. The research was done and all the false entries by the USDA and I've, I've read the laws on that and I've talked to attorneys about the laws on that and it's pretty plain that if you falsify government documents that is a felony. Yeah. So my question is which one of them is going to own up to being the one that falsified the documents? Mm -hmm. So I'd hate I'd hate to be on the witness stand and have to answer the the questions that are going to be asked. Ask your five-year-old stallions to go run and walk, please. How many are you going to show at the trainers? I think I got about five all together. Five? Mm hmm Well, you know they're going to inspect you five times. Yeah. Then, don't yes, you? sir. You know, the thing, like you say, go back to this inspection and all that stuff. You know, when you take a horse to an inspection, the HIO check every horse that goes in that ring. That's right. He don't pick and choose the horses he wants to check and don't check. They check every horse. So to me, how can the government have the right to check, to pick and choose the horses that they want to check? They should made, be made to check every one of them. You know, the, if you're going to pick up it. one foot, you should pick up every foot. I mean, if you the government, if you're going to go to that horse show or whatever, you know. If you're going to be there to inspect, you need to inspect it. I don't think, I do not think it's right for them to get the entry forms to where they can go in there and say, well, we want to get this one, we want to get yeah. that one. And they can say whatever they want to, but we already know that that's what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, they need to know that everybody is not uh, unethical. And that, that's a big, big thing is all, all of them, especially, I do not believe those guards would jeopardize their livelihood for the sake of a BMO that is unethical. Yeah. And we do know that there are several of those BMOs by their own actions that are unethical and biased towards the Tennessee walking horse. 
So, I know a lot of people are uh, afraid that they're really going to be real, real tough because of this lawsuit being filed. And making their way over to the South Rail. Command and parole in Cheryl Crawford. Still showing him. Yeah. But they need to realize that's retaliation. I don't think uh, I don't think they want to retaliate. If, I'm honestly hoping that they'll come in and inspect horses ethically. Yeah. And the way they should and not try to create a problem. But I still suggest that everybody video. If the government picks up that foot, video it. Heck, I'd video it the whole time. You know, Jerry, coming from a horse trainer's point of view of it, um, when they come in with a vengeance like that to do stuff, it ain't so much it's so much of, it hurts the trainer, it hurts the owner, it gets them upset it, and all that stuff. And then it might not lead up to nothing, but they just stopping that horse from showing and and that owner gets upset. And they're trying to get upset. I mean, it's yes. really, you know, cause when you think you're taking that horse up there through an inspection, you know, and you know somebody is inspecting you, you're gonna go the best way you can. But then when somebody tell you that, you know, that's hurting somebody's livelihood right there. You got, you know, when, when I walk up there, that's putting my livelihood in jeopardy. It is. Well, it, it, that's why I like to have mine inspected by an equine vet. Because if that equine veterinarian looks at that horse, and then we take it, that night we take it to the show, and he goes through there, and they come over there, and they turn him down for whatever reason, they better be right, because I'm going to fight it. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be. I'm not. I'm not going to be told that my horse was abused when I know he wasn't. Yeah. I'm not going to go with somebody saying, "Well, you mistreat him." I, I fight Second it all the time, and I'll continue to fight it. But you know, but it still boils down at the end of the day that you can't show that horse and exhibit That's that it. horse. And I mean it, and I'll tell you, it's like a big balloon when you walk up there and somebody stick a pin in it and bust it. it. And you I mean, lose it, your money, it, you it lose you money, and, 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 it, and, it, and, it's, and it's hard. I mean, it's just... Well, I remember one year that this young lady was going to go to law school and they turned her horse down under very quick, and her mother went ballistic because that, that would be a, a more or less a government case against her. Yeah. And, and they need to realize that what they do is it affects other things other than just the horse not getting the show. It affects the way people look at other people, the way up they look at a trainer. Second gear now, gentlemen. And, and, it, and it's not right. Go run yeah. it, they need to be honest in what they do. They need to be ethical. And they need to know what they're doing. Kind of like I was talking to a guy and I said, I don't think that I would want to go to a proctologist with a heart problem. Yeah. It ain't going to work. And that's the way I feel. Um, and I'll tell them that's the way I feel. Making their way into the east There's turn. brain power. Four-year-old open. Rising star. Winky Groover and brain power. That's another one that's still going yeah. and getting it. Uh, and that was 10 years ago. They ride to the reserve honors for the Rising Star Ranch, Shelbyville, Tennessee. Yes, sir. And another fine four-year-old coming your way over to the north side. I am Bob Marley. They're your four-year-old open champions tonight, Mr. Jimmy McConnell, and I'm Bob Marley. They ride to the championship honors for the Molly Walters family. Thank you, Jim. Nice. That is a nice horse. Slow walk him out, Jimmy. <laughs> Slow walk, walk him, him out. out. <laughs> like the we've got another commercial to go to. Yeah, I, you, I take you to, well, I take you to.
take us to this one. Oh, you going to? Yeah. Go ahead. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is the offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. More of What a Horse, coming up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've got my big friend here. <laughs> you getting good at it. Jerry Harris. I'm still going over this. I've been, and I've been reading this lawsuit. I tell you, Jerry's really... <laughs> Everybody's thanking everybody else about stuff, but I'm going to tell you, Jerry does a real good job on well, the information he does. I'm going to tell I, you. I appreciate that, but I just want people to know that I, I appreciate Frank Eichler. I appreciate these Wright brothers. They, 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 people don't know what, what everybody goes through to do this. And, and it's just like Frank, all that research that he did, and he pointed out all those discrepancies that you don't just look at something and get it. I mean, that takes time and it takes effort. And and Frank Eichler, he, he I can talk while we show video. Yes. But he he has really worked hard on this, and and he deserves the appreciation of the Wright brothers right deserves the appreciation. But I I think in all honesty that this is the best thing for this industry is that we finally stand up and say, hey, we want to be treated fairly. We have done our job, we've worked, we've got our horses in great condition, and we don't bring them up there for you to turn around and say, well, you're lying about getting them in great condition. And I know that we, I know we have some problem children, but anytime you're in competition, you're always gonna have that problem child, the one that tries to fudge on a test or yeah. or tries to deflate the football or put too much air in a tire. It's just, I mean, it, it's just the way it is. Well, at the end of the day, you got to still remember these are horses, these are animals. And you don't never know what's going through that horse's mind at that point in time when he's, when you, when you're up there. That's not you but know, as far as intentionally abusing them, abuse, no, 98% of Looking the people for, uh, don't. Those are the ones I'm fighting for now. If you legitimately catch someone that's abusing a horse, as far as I'm concerned, you can hang him in a tree yeah. out there. But it's, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be intentional. It's got to be something that you know that he does numerous times. And to be honest, we, we've had people given lifetime suspensions that were provoked or assisted in doing something or convinced to do something by an outsider that filtered their way in. Yeah. And I don't have to tell anybody who it is. It's just like when they said, well, he used a shock stick. If I was them, I'd be looking at the video at who gave him the shock stick. Yeah. And you know, all the years that I've been in a barn, all the years, I've never seen a shock stick used on a yeah. horse. I've never had. That is the solemn truth. He's Vita Blue and Gail Holcomb. Give him a hand, will you? It's Miss Gail Holcomb, and he's Vita Blue. Boy, she showed him good. 
But th those are things that, that uh, well, another thing, Jerry, it's just the, the process that they go through. I just like the palpation of a horse. You can go in a room with 10 people and you can shake everybody's hand and everybody gonna have a different handshake. Ain't no one gonna have the same handshake. Some of them shake soft, some of them shake firmly, some of them squeeze your hand hard. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not really telling well, it, the it, facts it, on that horse right there. Yeah, but it, I'm gonna tell you one thing I do watch, and, and that's bone to bone. And that's where that pressure comes in. Yeah. If you if you take and you turn your thumb up to where you're getting the bone of your first joint and mash it on yeah. the bone, you can get a horse to move. But going into the pocket, and we videoed them doing that, going into the pocket. We've got video of them using bone to bone to get a horse to move. We've got the proper inspection and the way that some of them do it to get them to move. Well, these horses flinch when the fly land on them. Oh, I know. But it, it, it's just across the board. We've got we, we've got problems that have filtered into this industry from outside sources. But we also, hey, it's just, you know, that horse showed twice. Yeah. But it, it's something that, that we need to look forward to once this lawsuit is settled and see how it comes out. Yeah. Mr. Winky Groover and Brain Power. They ride to the Reserve Grand Championship Honors for the Because honestly, if the truth is out and we get an honest hearing in court, I don't think there's any way that we can lose. I mean, there's too many laws been broken, too many assumptions being made. I feel great about what Frank Eichler has put together. I back him 100%. I'm, I'm totally in with him. It's just, uh, and I'm thankful to the Wright brothers for saying, hey, he's got his stuff together. We believe in him too. And that's what it takes. Yes, you're right. I want to wish everybody good luck at the trainer Me show. Too. Uh, I'll have my horse inspected before yeah. you lead him up. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, we'll see everybody next week when Chad or Chase, Chase will be here. And anybody that wants to be a co-host, let me know. Do it. Have a good week. See y'all later. Y'all be safe. <laughs>